All right, so for our final day, we have several things we're going to talk about. We've been building up various concepts. On the previous days, we talked about long tail keywords and such. We're going to bring those back because we need to then apply them. We actually need to use them. So day one was about figuring out our company profile, our keywords, and all of that stuff. And then the next day, we were setting up the webmaster tool so that we could start to track our data, our traffic, and such. And day three was about content and the various pillars of SEO. Remember, there was authority, there was longevity, authority, and content. So today, then, uh, we're going to get a little more hands-on with our website. If you've got a website, we should be able to log in to our website and um, apply things directly also. Now, again, I talk about oftentimes WordPress, and not everyone has a WordPress website, so today I, I need to specify to speak about WordPress, but if you've got a different kind of website, these concepts should still apply. Um, you'll find these buttons and these, and these concepts maybe in different screens of your website, but just about every modern website building tool has some way to do what we're going to talk about. So I'm going to pull up one of my websites and then we're going to, I'm going to give you, so remember on the syllabus here, I'm going to talk about uh, recommendations regarding WordPress, specifically plugins. We'll have a little bit of intro to SEM via social media, uh, reviewing our analytics data to refining our strategy, and then a class activity. At the end of the day, I'm going to give you up the opportunity if you would like to, I can have I can pull up your website up on my projector here. I'll put it up for the whole class. I'll give you an opinion on do's and don'ts on your website, and we can all talk about your website. That's optional if you'd like to do that. That'll be the last thing we do at the end of the day before that. So if you've got a website, it can be built in a variety of software. WordPress is one of the biggest ones. It's got about 25% market share. And in my company, that's usually what we work with exclusively. Sometimes we need to work with other tools to make a website, but usually it's WordPress because it allows us to create a variety of types of websites, blog websites, e-commerce websites. This is just an example of my own personal website with my own hobby. One of my hobbies is comic books, so vmcompost.com, and I've got a blog. WordPress can create a blog website, WordPress can create a full-featured business card website, an e-commerce website, just about any kind of website. So I've got a blog on my site. My main vmcompost.com is the general site with general concepts and then the the blog here focuses on on the comics, the comic book stuff. So when we talked about what's the purpose of, of your website, why are, why are you online and all of that, here's one of these examples where it's just for fun. I have here completely just about my hobby where I upload blog posts about comic books. I do a, an on and off series called Cool Comic Book Covers and so there was one there and then another one about uh, I do also a podcast, the Comic Book Commute podcast and then videos uh, here about the top costumes at Comic Con and all of that. So. So I'm doing all of these different things regarding comics, and I'm not selling anything on my website. I don't have that sort of purpose on my website to sell something. I want people to read stuff, but honestly, the purpose is you come and read something here, maybe click on an ad, and that's how I make a little money. So you can do these Google ads. We don't quite have the scope to talk about that in this class, but you can set up Google ads. This is all a free service. They give you the code, you put it on your website, and if someone clicks on the link, usually the content of the ad is related to the website, so it's not showing these weird topics that don't relate. Hopefully someone checks my website and say, yeah, I do want to check out mycomicshop.com, and if they click there, I'll get a little bit, um, a little bit of money. So the purpose of my website is to just talk about comics and such, but maybe make a little money on the side here. Yes. So that's a WordPress? Yeah, this is a WordPress site. So you're, well, you're the main one, but you're the first blog. Exactly. Be okay, 
if, if I go back to the main vmcompost.com, this website is a plain old Dreamweaver website. Dreamweaver is, I have to sort of say to some degree, a bit passe at the moment. I don't get a lot of call from clients to make a plain old Dreamweaver website. Obviously this looks nice and modern and such. It's Dreamweaver behind the scenes, but we don't get too much, um, you know, too many clients that want this kind of site. They usually want a more complex site. This site has you know, pictures and links and a great design and it's mobile friendly and all of that, but it's not as advanced as a Squarespace site or a Wix site or a, Dream we uh, a WordPress site. <coughs> and so on this site here, this is basically my site where you can go find me on all of these networks that I have. <coughs> too many networks. If, I, if you go to the bottom, there's a spot here. Here's where you can find me on Google Plus and Twitter and Vimeo and YouTube and Tumblr and Periscope everywhere. So I direct people to this main, vmcompost.com, simply as a place to find me <coughs> online, various places online, maybe updates of what my recent endeavors are, which obviously I need to update. You know, I'm not following my own advice about updating on a regular basis. That was on October. <laughs> but you know what happens. You, uh, <coughs> the, uh, the cobbler's kids have no shoes. Uh, I'm busy making shoes for everyone else, so I haven't done my own. Uh, and so this is all my content, and I have this out here to create a presence. I've had this, I, I don't remember how long I've had it, maybe 2012, this website. And so I'm trying to build authority, well, I'm trying to build longevity, authority, and content. And the big content is I'm active on a blog, and I'm on Twitter, and every other social network, basically. And so the blog is attached to it and then the blog <coughs> is a is a WordPress site you might see a little bit of a disconnect in designs the main VM Campos has a kind of a design that is different from the blog and that's one of the possible problems in in doing it this way that you um, you might not have the same design the Dreamweaver design is different from the WordPress design and sometimes it's a bit hard to make the match up. For my purposes, I'm not worried about that, that the designs are a little different. But for a regular client, probably they would really want it to be the same design throughout. But on my site here, it's a WordPress site. Notice one of the things I've been mentioning, and we'll talk about it again today, social media. Uh, that's SEM. That's an aspect that you also need to take it into account uh, in your online endeavors. Not only have a website, but be on social media. You don't need to be on all of these networks here. I'm not active every day on all of these networks, although I have these various profiles and I update them as much as I can. Uh, I guess I've kind of got it in order of maybe <coughs> activity. I'm pretty active on Twitter, Google Plus, and Instagram, and then like that. But you should already <clears throat> have that in mind or in your notes that social media is a very important aspect because this is where you're going to create even more content on a regular basis. Your tweets, your videos, your Facebook posts, <coughs> or Flickr photos. And if you don't know what some of these are, you can always click on them and it'll, uh, and it'll take you to those accounts. Not everyone needs every one of these accounts. Yes? Can I ask you a question? Uh, I'm kind of confused on that. Okay, not really confused, but I'm just wondering how do you orchestrate it? Where I want to do the, the Twitter thing to nourish my hits on my business site, but at the same rate, I have my personal Twitter thing where I want to, you know, just do all my normal stuff. So do you have like two, three, four accounts? And how do you, you could. I personally have my, my, my main Twitter account where I talk about all my things, but I definitely have... Um, a couple of my own company Twitter accounts and then four clients of course so yeah, you can create multiple accounts for more exposure um, make a note uh, I believe I mentioned it in this class there was brandyourself.com which was that website to that, that I mentioned maybe on the first day that is, is one of these reputation management websites uh, well there's another one this is about me. I believe it's about me.com, but I know it's about 
Dashmi. This is another one of these reputation management websites where you can um, create an account, put your best foot forward, and uh, create more content for the search engines to find. So about.me. What's the whole back cloud there? Is there a sound? That's SoundCloud, which is basically the YouTube of sound. So you can create an account here, upload your sound. So if you make your own music, you can put it there. I use it for podcasting. Um, so that's another way to reach an audience, a podcast, which is uh, basically an online radio show. It's not live. You can do it live, but usually these are pre-recorded, you upload them and people can download them. They can download them to their iPod or any music player or your phone and you you, ha you can have it that it and new episodes automatically download and then you listen to it on the go when you're doing the dishes in the car whatever. So podcasts uh, like many of these other more multimedia things takes more effort but um, if people want to talk about SoundCloud I can go into more detail but it's basically just a place for you to upload sound. Yes. It's very similar in that both YouTube and Vimeo are video services, so those require their own SEO too. Uh, and basically what you do on YouTube, you can do very similar to Vimeo, although Vimeo was designed to be sort of a counterpoint to YouTube in that one way to say it is that Vimeo is a little bit more snobbish. Yeah, artsy. Artsy, yeah. artsy in that YouTube you can upload any kind of video it can be any kind of like uh, you know handheld thing where I'm playing the guitar well on Vimeo really you want to upload something a little bit more professional that your cameras on a tripod and you and you set up good production values and light and such not that they'll bar you from uploading any kind of weird video but really the style of Vimeo is much more artsy or high class or snobbish and actually there's a paid version of Vimeo where you get even more features. There's a paid version of YouTube, but hardly people know about it at the moment. And that paid version is just to get, you know, no commercials and such. Um, so I'm going to log into my control panel here for for uh, WordPress, and then I'll talk about various things. But any any other general questions at the moment? It's, uh, your, uh Web host, is it yeah, just about any big web host will work. I've used GoDaddy for a long time, since like 2001. Uh, on this particular site, I use it, and I've had it from about 2012 or so. My other, one of my first websites, vmcinc.net, that I mentioned previously, I've had that one since 2002. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really haven't had myself any problems with GoDaddy, except in the beginning. Uh, when I forgot to pay that month's bill and they shut down my site and then I paid it and then they brought it back so that's when I was a struggling student and you could pay month to month so now I pay it a year in advance or two or whatever and I personally haven't had a lot of trouble with GoDaddy I've had a long-term client from about 2001 that she had GoDaddy since like 1998 and between 98 and 2010 or so she's had it and then in the last few years she was really tired of it she felt she had a lot of problems with it and that her requirements for GoDaddy didn't live up to what she was paying for, so she moved over to Bluehost. So I believe since about 2010 she's had Bluehost and she's been fine with that. So every company is going to vary, and honestly, the more you pay, the better results you get. But even on the best, even on the most affordable GoDaddy planets, it works well, and there was a student in another class that as soon as I mentioned GoDaddy, he said, you wouldn't pay me to go with GoDaddy. <laughs> well, everyone's got their own experiences. Everyone's got their own experiences, and I'm not saying one is better than the other, but I'm saying go with a big company. Bluehost, GoDaddy, one and one all of these big ones, HostGator. Because if you go with a local, you know, mom-and-pop local San Diego-based company, maybe you're going to get great tech support. But tech-wise, it might not be the best. It might be slower than the big boys. It might be, you might have more downtime than the big boys. And anyway, to get to the internet, there's, there's these gatekeepers throughout the world that you have to go through. And even the 
local mom and pop shops, they have to go through a gatekeeper, most likely GoDaddy or Bluehost or anyway. So I kind of think, well, why go through the middleman? You know, go to the big ones directly. But if you're having great experiences with your own provider, stick with them. There's no big reason to change. If the price is good, the tech support is good, and the services are good, there's no need to change. Even though I'm always talking about GoDaddy or Bluehost, WordPress, if what works for you works for you, keep it. Yes? I don't know anything about Bluehost. I'm going to look into it. But mm -hmm. GoDaddy offers so much free stuff. It's really great. They're all in such competition, all the big ones. You're going to find very similar what you get for free on GoDaddy on Bluehost, too, with slight variations in price and terms and such. Really, it's a it's a big endeavor, but you're not going to go bad. You're not going to go astray with GoDaddy, Bluehost, or Host Monster. Those are the ones that I know I worked with directly, and they worked well. Uh, another popular one that I haven't really worked that much with is called DreamHost. Uh, I've also worked with Linode a bit, although that was very tech. That was very techy, and if you really needed powerful service, Linode worked well, but it was probably going to be over the top for most people. So, if you've got a Linode, L-I-N-O-D-E, uh, DreamHost, GhostHost, that's a good name. I'm going to take that and make a company out of it. Ghost, ghost host with the most. So if you've got a, a website, like a WordPress website, you can log into it. I've logged into my dashboard. So any website creation tool will work for these concepts. But again, I'm going to focus on, on, on WordPress. And in the WordPress class, I go into more detail about these things. But just some notes. I'm going to write some notes here and put them into the, the folder. So... You know, I lost my Comic Con stand. You know how long I'm trying to get back into that? Really? Every time I have like five computers running with different registrations, mm -hmm. and none of them get in. This is the first year that I've had bad luck and I didn't get a ticket. Good luck. Yeah. Really mm -hmm. um, so, just backing up a bit uh, recommendation I'm WordPress. Sorry. You know what L-I-O-N-D dot com? No, uh, L-I-N-O-D-E. N-I-D-I-N-O-D-E. Yes. So, provider recommendations, GoDaddy, Bluehost, HostMonster. These are the ones that I've definitely worked with. also Linode and um, DreamHost. I'm kind of wary. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of wary of free hosting because they can put whatever they want yeah. around your site. I don't mention. Work. I don't mention any free hosting. Okay. Uh, and the big one that's yeah. famous for hosting is 000web.com, something like that. They just had a big hack. And uh, all their stuff was exposed, so I don't recommend the free the free hostings. Maybe they're good to start off with, but they're not going to work out in the long term, I believe. And I was also saying, use social media. If you only have one to dedicate your time to, Facebook. But if you're able to, Facebook, Twitter, Google+. And from there, there are so many others that I can recommend, of course. Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn. Pinterest I can go on and on. Yeah, exactly. That's... Um, that's a very attractive place for graphics. You can do video on Pinterest too, but it's not that common. I see. So then um, the thing that always happens 
is you might then need to be you might, you, you then might need to be get very niche as in what very specific target audience might you reach what might you be trying to go for so uh, I'm gonna say niche audience SoundCloud because that's for audio SlideShare that's for um, presentations so you can you can create an account on SlideShare and then you can um, create PowerPoint presentations and upload them and get traffic that way you can um, you can build an audience that way in uh, in SlideShare also Okay, so I'm saying I recommend. Um, I'm saying that I recommend um, WordPress. So what I'm going to do first is show some examples of um, plugins that I recommend with with WordPress to help you get the most out of it. Um, so if you've got WordPress, if you've got the full featured WordPress, you have a plugins link. Plugins are extra little add-ons that enhance the abilities of WordPress. The one that's at WordPress.com doesn't have the ability to add extra plugins because plugins usually come from third party or extra companies. Companies that are not part of the official WordPress company and therefore WordPress does not want to do tech support for someone else's software so you're not going to get plugins on the wordpress.com hosted WordPress you will get it over on a GoDaddy WordPress or a Linode WordPress or Bluehost you get the full features I'm gonna show here some examples Pretty much all the ones I have here. Okay, so I'll just go through them alphabetically. Uh, write them down over here also. So WordPress plugin recommendations. One is called Akismet. This is one of the basic ones that you get, I believe, automatically with WordPress, which is basically uh, spam moderation plugin. What this does is it helps you keep keep the spam out. You see a moment ago when I was on my my main dashboard it told me up here Akismet has protected your site from 24,000 spam comments already. So that's from the hist from the life of this site which is you know two or three years. Uh, but what this is doing is Akismet is this free plugin that my site and millions of other WordPress sites are all running together and basically we're all helping each other out automatically to take out the spam. Um, this, it, one of the banes, one of the scourges of having a website is comment spam. The spam bots that are running 24 hours a day looking for websites to add a comment. What's useful for the spam bots is oftentimes in a comment you can add a link. So if the spam bot finds a website where, you, where someone can comment and they just put some gibberish comment with a link back to their website that could give them traffic back to their website. These little spam bots are getting so smart now because they used to be so obvious. It was just gibberish words plus a link. Now they're so smart because they start off with one or two sentences of flattery and they say, I found your website and it was so informative and very great. Please buy cheap Canadian medicines. Dot com. <laughs> so they have one or two sentences where they first really make it seem like a real comment, but then you start to see the pattern that they're all like very congratulatory and generic. They're going to tell me what a great website I have, but is it my comic book website? Is it my tech website? Is it my bakery website? It doesn't say. It's just so generic that it can apply to any website. A Kismet works really well to, to spot that and simply trash that spam and the more you use it, the smarter it gets. 
it can of course also hold a comment because it might not be smart enough to catch every spam and then you can say no it's good or it's bad so akismet is one of my recommended plugins duplicator actually let me check something here quickly hopefully duplicator is a um, is a plugin that lets you make a backup of your site. Um, a traditional WordPress site or a website built entirely in basic code is um, is developed on your own computer. You write your site and then you upload it to the server, GoDaddy, and then it's live and people can can see it. That's a traditional site. A WordPress or some of these modern sites like Squarespace and Wix and such, they are um, they are in the cloud, simply meaning that um, your software you access it in the web browser and your site's online and there's nothing that's installed on your computer your website files are not on your computer they're in the cloud and so the good about that is that um, you can access your site and edit it from any any web any computer that has an internet address but the problem is that if the server messes up if the server has a problem and crashes, did you have a backup of what was on the server? If you didn't, then your site is gone because you never had a copy originally on your own computer. So this plugin, Duplicator, is software to make a backup of your site. Backup of your site. And there are many kinds of um, of versions of this software. This one is one of the ones that's um, rather manual. It's not complicated, but you have to do it all yourself. You have to go in and create the backup when you want the backup. Other versions of this kind of software will do it on a, on a schedule. And like most of these plugins, there is often a free version and a paid version. And so the duplicator, the, the regular duplicator version, is the free one that's the most manual. I'm going to give you here a link, which is my affiliate link, to, to buy, at a discount, the pro version of duplicator. I don't remember how, how much it's discounted, but you get a discount, and it's not that expensive anyway. It's like $40 or something to run it on three sites, something like that. But the duplicator pro version, at that link, is, is better because it can allow you to do these scheduled backups. You can set it up and it'll make a backup and it'll automatically save your files to your Dropbox, let's say. So then your files are saved at a completely different location and that's what a true backup is. If you've only got a backup on one location and that one location fails, well you lost everything, including the original and the backup. So with this pro version, it will make a backup and it'll save it to your Dropbox or whatever or some other cloud storage medium. So if your whole site crashes, you have a backup of your site to bring back. So that's snapcreek.com slash question AFFID equals 32. If you follow that link, you'll get a discount on the Duplicator Pro plugin from its regular price. So I recommend this plugin because it helps make a perfect backup of your website, which is also useful if you want to migrate your website. Let's say you started on GoDaddy and you're having a problem and you want to take it over to Bluehost. You have to take your site and all of the pieces, including the database, from GoDaddy over to Bluehost. And Go Duplicator makes a perfect copy. You can take it to Bluehost, unpack it, and then you've got your perfect copy on the new server. We're going to get into detail in a bit with Google Analytics Yoast. Yoast is one of these big names 
in plugins, especially for SEO. This is a company that makes a couple of plugins that are very useful. One of them is the, is the Yoast Google Analytics. Uh, I mentioned this for some of you when we were setting this up last time, which is uh, its main purpose is to make it easy to verify your Google Analytics. Remember, we set up Google Analytics. We needed to copy that code and put it onto our site. If we didn't copy that code to every page on our site, it wouldn't work completely. So with Google Analytics Yoast, um, easy... Google Analytics integration. And it will actually even show you a lot of the data from Google Analytics right on your website without having to leave your website to log into Google Analytics. Related to that is Yoast SEO. What do they call it exactly? Yoast SEO. Yeah. So Yoast SEO is an amazing full-featured SEO control panel. I'm going to go into a lot of detail with this in a little bit. What this does is gives you a quick way to edit your metadata, add your long tail keywords, um, it'll give you at a glance ratings of how optimized each of your pages are because full SEO is that you optimize every page, not just the home page. We'll get into that today, of course. But this will let you do that. This is the one I recommend, but another famous one is called All-in-One SEO Pack. I haven't used that one as much, but I have several colleagues in the industry that swear by that one, and uh, I usually use in my company the Yoast SEO one, but other people say that one's good. What you, what you don't want to do is have them both at the same time because they're going to conflict. They're both trying to do the same thing. So either or, I recommend Yoast, but all-in-one works well too. Another big one that's very useful is called Jetpack. This one's official from from the WordPress company. Actually, Akismet is also from the official WordPress company, so is Jetpack. Jetpack basically, what's the best way to say it? It's like um, a collection of mini plugins. If you've got a WordPress.com website, it has many great features, such as the ability to easily distribute your blog posts. I write something on my blog and I also need to advertise it on my Twitter and my Facebook. At WordPress.com there's a simple button called Publicize. When I publish something on WordPress.com it goes to Twitter, it goes to Facebook without me having to do that extra. WordPress has many extra features like that. If you set up your WordPress at GoDaddy or Bluehost or Linode or whatever, it does not have some of those features. But if you get Jetpack, free plugin, you can set up Jetpack and then it will give you those features of WordPress.com. It'll give you the ability to quickly publish your posts to various social networks. It'll give you the ability to speed up your site by using image CDNs. Technically, it's just it speeds up your site. Uh, you have a um, subscription, a more powerful subscription feature. So Jetpack is like a bunch of mini plugins that enhance your site, your GoDaddy version of your site, so that it's more like the official WordPress.com site. Redirection is one of the most boring ones, but most important. Uh, this is to fix broken links, which are 404 errors. You've been to a website probably, you click the link, and then either you get a blank screen or you get a 404 message or you get some sort of message that it doesn't work. Broken link. Broken links are not so good for SEO, as we talked about previously, remember? Redirection keeps track of all the people, all the broken links that people are trying to access. Okay, keeps track of it, but it also fixes them because on a technical level, what it does is it creates. 
301 redirects. 301 redirects. On a technical level, it is telling the search engines basically this broken link now has been moved permanently to this other location. One common use for this is let's say I had my website victor.com slash about dash us. I had an about us page. About us. And this is obviously an, a, a valid link and such. But for the about page, it's sort of becoming a silent standard that you really just want it to be called about. More websites use it simply as about rather than about us or about the company or about me. You know, about could apply to a person, a company, an organization, whatever. So if you have an about page, and you should, it's best practice to simply call it about. Well, I've got about us. Does that mean I simply change the name of my link to about? Yes and no. In WordPress or just about any software, you can simply change the name to about. But that creates broken links. Because if you've been online for any amount of time, you might have had links going to about us. And now you've removed about us and you've got about. So you're going to suddenly get a bunch of broken links in your Google Webmaster tools. We need to tell the search engines about us has permanently moved to about. That's a 301 redirect. And that's what this boring plugin does. It keeps track of those broken links and lets you create these rules so that when the when people were going to the wrong link, it will automatically seamlessly direct them to the right link. And then no broken links is better for the search engines for your SEO. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Just on top of the 404s, um, you, you can get in there and you can customize your 404. Mm -hmm. uh, would you recommend doing that? Is there something tricky to that? I mean, because I, I realize most people don't touch their 404 pages and just mm -hmm. use the stock 404. But then you see the silly ones. What would you <laughs> recommend? Uh, let me see if I can find a silly one right here github.com slash blah 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 yeah that's one of the funny ones yeah this page this is not the page you're looking for get it Star Wars that's a little scene from Star Wars so um, it can be a simple broken link 404 error the end but some pages make it fun like this there's no big reason to make it fun but what I would recommend is don't make it a complete dead end link. Make it like this. Maybe a built in little search box to then guide them elsewhere. Even if you can't do a search box, simply have 404 error. Let's go back to the home page. You know, not a dead end link right there, a link that goes back to the home page or a way for people to search. Oh, look at that. It's got parallax. When I move my mouse around, you get different perspectives. Is that your so right here with 404s, try to make your 404s useful. Add a search box or link to home. Don't leave it as a dead end page. There's a variety, you saw over here that there's this uh, social media overload right here. There's a variety of plugins that will let you do this. One of the ones that I've used um, that I like is uh, simply called Social Media Widget. Let's you put a variety social buttons. Can I ask you a question? Uh -huh. um, social buttons are like a big thing on mobile because 
they give it away and they stay there. I've seen some that kind of just flow through these transparent buttons. Would you recommend having them off to the side and once they scroll, go away? Or would you recommend they pick up real estate on the phone? That has to do with uh, user experience. If your buttons are annoying and they're on top of content and such, then it's not it's not so good. If they're transparent, that might be okay, but then are they noticeable? People might say, might not quite see them if they're transparent. So I would say keep them uh, keep them out of the way. Um, oftentimes the one that you see most often that's obtrusive is the pin it button, the Pinterest button. You see that one on top of a lot of buttons. That one's uh, kind of hard to to give an answer for because it kind of defeats the purpose to move it out of the way if you want people to pin your stuff on Pinterest. But I would say kind of keep those buttons out of the way. People will 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 click them and use them those buttons when when they want to. We don't want to force it. Yes. Isn't adding a variety of social buttons also a function of the It's one of the things I ran into. It's so limited given the number of social media. Well, here's the thing. Nowadays, a lot of the WordPress themes come with some sort of social media, some sort of social media feature. If your theme is limited, that's when you then add an extra plugin. This plugin adds. Also, oh, it could override what's on the theme. Yeah, you might have to simply check, however, that they don't conflict. You might have to remove. Or deactivate the built-in social media feature of your theme and then go with a plugin to take over because then that's two things trying to do the same thing now one thing that I can also say here this you you run into this sometimes themes come with a bunch of built-in let's see if I can show an example um, sometimes a theme comes with a, with a bunch of built-in social media icons and you're saying well I want SoundCloud and it's not included in my built-in list uh, well, this one doesn't have an example, but um, I can't find one just at the moment. But sometimes the plugin, the themes come with a built-in system, and it's tied to something called FontAwesome.com. Font Awesome is basically a font that is awesome a font that has all of these social icons built into it. Uh, let me make sure it's the right one. Font. Awesome. Okay, it's fontawesome.io, not .com. Fontawesome.io. This is basically the icon font and CSS toolkit. This is the most technical aspect of this in that all the documentation and such is here. But basically it's all there's a bunch of these icons. All of these examples here are icons that you can add to your site. You'll have to read the documentation exactly how, but oftentimes it's simply changing a little bit in your in your CSS where there's FA-Facebook that creates the Facebook icon. It's fa-pinterest and it creates the Pinterest icon. So if you have, if you, if your system, if your WordPress uh, has the font awesome capability but it's not showing you the exact icon that you want, there are like 200 of these icons. You just have to look it up here and it'll tell you. There's like fa bullhorn, you know, that will that will make a little bullhorn icon that you can use for whatever you want. I think there's one called like folder open dash o. This is one that's a little folder that's open and the color is is open instead of closed. So this is a way that I've seen to get around it also that if your theme doesn't have all of the features that you all of the social media icons that, that you want, it might have font awesome capabilities and then you simply have to change a little bit of the CSS and you'll be able to see just about any icon. Let's see right here. Bar chart, Bluetooth icons, crosshairs, hands, peace sign, 
icons, all of these icons. And th these are cool because they're based on a font and text downloads lickety split on the internet. Text doesn't take any amount of time to download compared to a graphic. If I design that in Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever, it's still going to be a graphic that's going to be ten times bigger than text. This this as a plain as an as the most optimized ping graphic is still going to be like like uh, let's say 20, 29 kilobyte uh, twenty nine yeah one one kilobyte. As a font, it's one byte because it's just one character. You can change the size of it. Yeah, because it's a font, then you can further add CSS to say font dash size 200%. And it's going to be nice and crisp and big and, and look nice. Question? Yeah, um, so are you taking that and putting it on your side, or is it referring out to that to get that icon? Either or. If it's, if it's set up in a way that it, that it connects to the website here, that can work. Or if you, you know, install it directly on your site or your server, it's coming from your server. But this is one of the ones that's becoming also one of these standards, like JavaScript or jQuery, that everyone's got a copy of it on a server somewhere. So if you still have it online, most likely it still has traveled around for people to, to use. So let me uh, let me mention one of these plugins in detail. Then we'll take a break. And when we come back, I'll mention the I'll mention the uh, Yoast SEO in detail because that one's that one's a big one. Uh, before I go into detail, any general questions about any of these? Okay, like I said, the redirection that one's boring, but. I want to show you how that one works. Whenever you install any of these WordPress plugins, the tricky part is that there's no consistency to how to use these plugins. I believe there is a best practices that WordPress puts out, but I don't know, people don't follow it or, or can't find it or what. What I mean is that when you install one of these plugins, they come from different companies. This one's coming from Life in the Grid, Team Yoast, Automatic. Automatic is the parent company of WordPress. So anything that is from Automatic is officially from WordPress. But 99% of the time, you're going to find plugins from other companies. And every company then decides how to implement their plugin. Because some plugins are very easy, and they give themselves a brand new space here. Analytics. You don't have this tab unless you install Yoast Analytics. Jetpack also installs itself into a nice menu item like that. At the very bottom, I also see Duplicator, Social Widget, and SEO. So these install themselves to a nice little menu item like that. If you don't see your plugin installing itself like that, you'll have to look at a couple of places. One might be under settings. Under settings, you might have a new menu item here that you didn't have before. I see sometimes plugins install themselves that way. Like one of the e commerce plugins that I use all the time for shopping carts installs under settings a new item called shop. And sometimes the plugins install themselves under tools. So you might not ever go to tools because there isn't too much to do there usually, but sometimes a plugin installs itself. And sometimes the plugin description here tells you where to find it or a link to where it's at. Sometimes it doesn't. You have to hunt around your settings a bit. So tools, red, redirection. There's the redirection plugin tucked inside of tools. And so <clears throat> when you set up redirection, you'll have these different buttons up here, uh, and then it'll be keeping track of your 404. So I haven't checked this one very recently. Let's see what it says. If I go to 404s, I have 28 items. Um, so this is the screen that I also see is, is the screen that's going to scare you 
because you're going to see here the spam bots and the hackers trying to break into your site. Because as I've used this for a few years, I see these patterns showing up. I see I see these broken links of spammers, like right here. A spammer is trying to check for my Hello World blog post, the default Hello World blog post that comes with every WordPress. So if my site has not been updated or secure, I might have a vulnerability on that page. Uh, so here, there's at least one hit from the 21st. Someone trying to view the Hello World site, and it seems to be coming from MSN search with that IP address. So, I just Question. did the same gibberish, and mine caught my gibberish. Huh. <laughs> Let's see if I see another example. I, I see so many times, okay, like this, this is weird, blog.com slash privacy.php, question, you find it. There are some plugins out there that I see on a regular basis that, that are missing, that are broken links to these plugins that I don't use, to these themes that I don't use, because that leads me to believe those themes are insecure, and the hackers are trying to get into these themes. That's why you want to update your WordPress themes, your, your WordPress plugins, your WordPress site. You want to do updates on WordPress because people are looking for the vulnerabilities. This one's not so bad. I, I cleaned up some of the things already. But I've seen some examples here where it's just a big long list from the same IP address over and over and over from Russia that is trying to break into my site because it's trying to check on a broken plugin. So with any of these here, I have the ability to add a redirect. Let's say, yes, people are trying to. So for some reason, this says that my Comic Con Costumes Day 2 link is broken. I don't believe it should be, but I would need to research why is that broken. Yep, Beagle 404. Um, maybe I renamed it or something, and I forgot to fix that. So this is an example. There's a broken link. I have to... Let's see. Day two. Is that no, it came with the theme actually. Okay, I see. Um, so this is looking for. Let me show you here. The broken link is on the right, and the correct link is on the left. There's a subtle difference in the address. Here's the address for the broken link. Here's the address for the real link. You see any difference? Dashes. Yeah. Technically, regular dash, m dash, good, and then regular dash. That dash in the middle is a little longer than a regular dash. It's an m dash. It's just a stylistic thing. But anyway, that caused there to be a broken link. So at some point when I changed that, it caused a broken link. Okay. Great, great example to fix this. So my redirection plugin is telling me people are trying to go to that old link. Where's your new link? So what I do here, what I do here on that broken link is I say add a redirection. And it says people are trying to go to that broken link, the source. What's the real link? So I need to add here then the real link, which is this one right here. Just like this, yes. Um, so absolute path. So from the root level inside the blog, there's this link that's broken, and you have fixing it. It's got dash, m dash, dash. So we'll see right there. That's the big difference. And you can get pretty advanced here in, in what exactly to do, but the defaults will work just fine. What's the broken link? What's the active link? You can create groups and do regular expressions if you're advanced and all of that. Wild cards and all of that advanced stuff. But usually the basic one is going gonna, is gonna, to... The defaults are going to work just fine. And then what, what you do here is simply say add redirection. So now, when people are trying to go to the wrong address, they'll automatically get taken to the right address. Again, boring plugin, but highly important. 
So I go back to my reports. So can I just mm -hmm. So you say uh, like that hit is coming from my shot. It's like it's following the broken leg. Basically, someone launched that spider, and it's just creeping around the web, and it's going to get back up to that person with a kind of vulnerability. Is that what you're thinking? Because I mean, I, I fear those Russian hackers like people believe, you know, setting up databases. So I was just wondering, what's your thinking, thinking that's going to happen? Uh, on that one that I just fixed, and these are the ones that I need to fix, most likely it's not it's not hackers. It's that, yeah, there's a broken link somewhere. The ones that I can pick off that are hackers are when they're trying to connect to something like this, blog slash xml1wp2.php. I know that I have nothing like that on my site here, but someone is trying to see if I've got a broken PHP code. So that's how I, I start to understand what the, what the bad links are the broken links or the hackers trying to find a vulnerability. So yeah, they send these little spiders out trying to find a broken link and you can buy this software off the shelf basically from the dark web or whatever where it's going to find, where it's going to have a database of broken links, a database of broken plugins. You just run the software and then it could do so many things. It could, if it's broken enough, it could install an extra app on your server so that every time someone visits your site it logs that. Or it can figure out your server password and then someone could log into the server and do really bad stuff so it's hard to say what this particular one's trying to do but I just know that it's it's fishy question no, that was my, you answered it. okay so uh, I'm not gonna do them all right here but this it, this is very useful because then you hover your mouse over them and it'll try to give you a bit more info and I just guessed Russian hacker but, um, unfortunately we do see a lot of traffic uh, spam and hacker traffic coming from the Eastern Bloc and, and Russia and, and China and all of these all of these countries uh, and so here is giving some information someone was on Firefox on their Windows 7 trying to get into my site on Safari no uh, it was Chrome and uh, that's the IP address and you can try to do an IP address lookup, but that's not really accurate because the, the real hackers can spoof their address so that it looks like they're coming from Italy, but actually they're coming from Ukraine, let's say. Uh, so, like right here, Urban, this has got an active link over to Urban Giraffe, which is right here. So this is claiming this is coming from San Diego, actually. It's in the same house. It's coming from the same house. Uh, 209s, usually I see those attached to um, uh, AT&T, 51, I'm not sure, but this one's from the UK, so it seems to be coming from London. Buckingham Palace, apparently. Just standing right outside. You see what Victor Coppos is doing today? Yeah, the, 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 queen, <laughs> the queen is hacking me. Cosplay is a lot of money. <laughs> this one's coming from in the US Newton, Wichita, Kansas, right? So yep, some of traffic from Kansas. Not necessarily a bad, you know, attack vector, but I'm just saying that that's someone's trying to visit the Comic Con tag and for some reason it's broken. Well I see because it's going to blog blog. Same blog. Sometimes some of these things break themselves when you change internal things. So that's why it's a good idea to check on your your error pages. Google Analytics, I mean uh, Google Webmaster Tool gives you a version of these broken links, remember? This one is integrated directly into WordPress and more importantly lets you create these redirects to fix your errors. So let's take a break here. But any big questions about this redirection plugin? All right, uh, it's uh, one thirty-seven ish. Let's come back at one forty-seven, and we'll go on.